are you getting black screens and 100% fans just like this? Well, I hope I have the fix for you today. Hi friends and welcome to Display Reality, showcasing display technology to help you make that awesome buying decision. And in this case, helping you fix your GPU. When I started this channel, my first video was unboxing a 2080 RTX gaming GPU. And now it's been over six years. I've already run into a couple of issues, so I'll try to cover everything today. Nothing too detailed, but just some things on my experience with the black screens, high fans, bad performance, throttling, and I'll even repace the 2080 to get my GPU up and running. Trust me, I can't even run Minecraft or FNAF Cart or Doom 2016. The throttling is just so bad, it just kicks me out of the game. So let's start off with that black screen, 100% fans on your main PC. Earlier in the year, I have been trying to live stream and throughout my streams or throughout my gaming and recordings, my PC would just black screen 100% fan. It would happen once a day. And I know how demoralizing it could be because if you want to create content or you just want a game, these things are really annoying and you don't even know what to begin to look for. Is it your PSU? Is it your CPU, your GPU, your motherboard? And if you're out of money, tough luck. So you gotta find the problem. Now, I made the mistake of trying to look at other things, the PSU, the CPU, etc. I should have done this since day one and I recommend you doing the same. Change your GPU cables. Actually, when I got my 2080, I didn't have any problems because I used the stock cables with my Corsair PSU. And me thinking, hey, premium cables are better. I got a cable mod for my 4080 and ever since then, I've had problems. Once I changed back to the Corsair PSU cables, I actually had to buy another set. The problem went away. No more black screens, no more 100% fans, no more removing me from the content that I create or the gaming that I was doing. And this exactly happened on my 4080. So this story pertains to the 2080 and 4080 GPUs. I started to get black screens also on my 4080 because I even upgraded to a cable mod. And that cable actually had a defect. It was recalled. So can you believe my luck? I haven't live streamed because of a dumb cable. So I got a premium cable from Amazon for my 4080. Here it is on screen. And the problem went away on both my 2080 and 4080 GPUs. Try that. Don't try anything else. Don't break your head and try to fix anything. Start with the cheapest thing possible, which is a cable. And then you work your way up. Now I'm sure there's other things that may have problems. Your AIO, your CPU, your fans. But in this case, I bet you, I've looked online and on Reddit. This is like 90% of the problem. Get some official cables from your PSU, your power supply unit, and I hope it fixes it and you'll be good to go. But let's get back on track to the 2080 RTX. I've had this GPU running non-stop for six years. Gaming, content creation, about every six to eight months, it does get dusty. So let's give it a clean. Before we get to that thermal paste redo, I do recommend you having a good air purifier in your gaming room. This is the one that I currently got. It works flawlessly. You can control it from your phone. And now my room, really is dust free. Now don't expect one air purifier to purify your whole house. This is really for a room or a living room. So you may need more air purifiers depending on the room, depending on how big your house is. But get an air purifier. It's your electronics best friend. Here I have a keyboard vac to clean the fan wings. Also get a blower as it'll blow dust in those hard to reach places. Starting off cleaning the fans. You won't have to do this if you have a really good air purifier. But here I'm just showing you how simple it is. Just clean each fan with your keyboard vacuum or similar device and you're good to go. Then to get into those grills, use your air blower. Blow out any dust that may be lingering in between. So once the intake and exhaust has been cleaned, now we're ready for the thermal paste. Here's the back of the 2080 GPU. Remove all the screws that you see here. Make sure you keep a note on which goes to which. Actually, my camera died when I was opening my portion. So here's a quick video from Geek's Lab to show you how easy it is, how easy it is to open. So once you remove all the screws, remember you do have some cables attached on the side and on the back side. So remove them and it's just the remaining paste holding on the GPU. So just pull it apart. As you can see, there's still two more cables. Remove these two cables so you can work more freely. Now you can see in this video, the thermal paste is really dried out. It's all cakey, pasty. You can easily see here. On the top, we have the heatsink, the GPU and the thermal pads. While on the bottom is the actual processor with that thermal paste. So let me show you what happened in my situation. This was my 2080 GPU. Look how flaky everything looks. No wonder it dried out and I was getting all that throttling. Even on the heatsink, there's next to nothing. Everything is just dry. You can even see all the dust around the thermal pads. 
And this is an area where you have to be very careful. If you're not going to replace your pads, you have to wipe these very delicately. Now I use the Noctua Thermal Cleaner. They're alcohol pads. I use that to clean this whole GPU setup. Sure, you can do this with alcohol and some water, but I had some Noctua pads laying around, so I used those and they work perfectly. Just be gentle on the thermal pads to clean all that dust and debris. Once everything is clean, look at that night and day difference. The heatsink looks brand new and the thermal pads look as best as they can be. Now I have been searching online tremendously and I could not find this information. So you'll see it here for the first time, worldwide probably. Let's talk about the thermal pad sizes. As if you're gonna buy some, you need to know which size you're gonna need. The ones on the left with the arrows, I would say they're a bit smaller than the 0.5 millimeters. I would say 0 0.35, 0 0.4, but they don't make them in those sizes. So the best thing you can do is get the smallest at that 0.5 millimeter size. They are super thin. I did measure these with my digital caliper, so they're accurate. It's just that unless they're really 0.5 millimeters and it's been squished so much that it's reading thinner. So I measured it at 0.35 and the smallest they actually make is 0.5. I've seen other GPUs like the Asus. They use a 1.25 millimeter thermal paste. So then Asus recommends you using a 1.5. You get what I'm saying? You're gonna have to compromise. Moving on over to the long strips, I would easily say these are a little bit thicker, about one millimeter. And this big long one is also one millimeter. It might be a little bit bigger, but as you can see, this long pad has to line up with this part of the GPU. So these are the sizes. I didn't personally change the thermal pads as just by repacing the GPU, it fixed my problem. But if you had to, this pertains to a 2080 RTX Aorus Extreme and probably even the TI version. But this is how it looks all cleaned up. You're good to go, let's repaste. Again, using those Noctua pads and some fingernail power, everything is good to go. I put some paste with a drop, as you can see here. And this whole situation with the GPU throttling or any kind of fan issue all went away. Now I can play Doom Eternal. Literally, FNAF cart was messing up all the time and that doesn't even run hard. So imagine that, this GPU was really throttling. There's other methods that you can repaste your GPU, just like here on Geekslap. They're doing the whole spread, but it gets the job done. You do what you gotta do, whatever makes you feel better. And guys, that's about it. You cleaned your fans, you cleaned your GPU, you repaste it. No need to buy another GPU. It's that simple. The only worrying part is removing the screws and putting them back to where they belong. That's about it. And again, if you're getting those black screens and high fans, change your PSU cable. That's the first thing you should do. From the GPU to PSU, make sure you get the corresponding cable. And now using my computer for over four months, no black screens, which would happen once a day. You don't understand what a relief that is. And hopefully soon I'll be able to reintroduce my live streams and content create all day long because now I'm not worried on my PC overheating. Friends, if you have any questions regarding this setup, regarding what I did, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll get to it as fast as possible. Don't forget to become a YouTube member if you want detailed information or if you want to help support the channel, I would truly appreciate it. I break my head for you so you don't have to. So please take that into consideration. So friends, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button so more people can see it to help them make that awesome buying decision. Consider subscribing if you want more videos just like this one. Breaking news, reviews, even GPU fixes, POV gameplay, and everything in between. Thanks for watching, friends. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys next time.